Welcome to worship on this second Sunday after Pentecost. This worship service may feel a little mixed match to you, and that's okay. We'll be celebrating our seniors who are graduating high school, while we also remember and commemorate the lives of the Emmanuel Nine, who were killed by a white supremacist during their Bible study on June 17th, 2015. There is so much to ponder and sit with these days, and maybe your days feel like this worship service will feel, oscillating between grief and joy. Wherever you are today, in your emotions, you are welcome here. I invite you to this time of worship as we are led in a confessional litany by leaders from the Northwest Washington Synod. They were doing what we are called to do as they engaged in Bible study. It was Wednesday night. A stranger walked in. And these people welcomed him and prayed together. The Reverend Sharonda Coleman Singleton. Cynthia Marie Graham Hurd. Susie Jackson. Ethel Lee Lance the Reverend DePayne Middleton Doctor, Taiwanza Kebui Diop Sanders, the Reverend Daniel Lee Simons, the Reverend Myra Singleton Quarles Thompson, and the Honorable Senator and Pastor of the Church, the Reverend Clementa C. Pickney. This stranger wanted to ignite a race war, he said, after he shot and killed them, denying them the very humanity he claimed for himself, claiming rights and privileges associated with whiteness. Now we are grieved, once again in pain, burning and anguished, lamenting the horror of evil unleashed. And so we cry out, have mercy, O God, have mercy on us. Sorrow and heartache have come to us. Death and mourning have visited us. We feel far from you, O God, and distant from one another. And so we cry out, have mercy, O God, have mercy on us. Evil besets us in our land. We acknowledge that our nation is socialized in ways that promote and normalize colonialization. We cry out against the horrors and agonies of racism. And so we cry out, have mercy, O God. Have mercy on us. The privileged of our nation have benefited from practices that dehumanize indigenous peoples. We have claimed as discovery lands that were not ours. These lands have been stolen and the nations that were the original occupants of these lands slain. And so we cry out, have mercy, O oh God, and hear us. Tribalism has led to the denial of your presence, O oh God. Present generations, the children whose ancestors were kidnapped and sold into slavery, those forced to labor not on their own behalf, still suffer and struggle to live in freedom, while the children of the colonizers live out out of white privilege, denying the fullness of your presence in all people. And so we cry out, have mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. 
assaults born of greed and murder continue propping up white privilege that is institutionalized in our church and nation, preventing us from recognizing the twin evils of racism and nationalism still perpetuated among us. And so we cry out, have mercy, O God. Have mercy on us. Open our eyes, O oh God. Open our hearts. Open our ears, O oh God. Open our minds. Help us to behold one another as you behold us. Help us to be more firmly rooted in the practices of the gospel so that when we pray, the way we live will make real the dream of your beloved community within and among us. And so we cry out, have mercy, O God, have mercy on us. With the help of your mercy and grace, lead us to think, believe, and change. May your gospel's transforming power by the working of the Holy Spirit be present in us, in our churches, in our nations, and all the people of the earth. And the people said, Amen. Amen.
A reading from Psalm 100. Acclaim Yahweh with joy, all the earth. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Know that Yahweh is God. Yahweh made us and we belong to the Creator. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks to God, bless God's name. For Yahweh is good, God's steadfast love endures forever and God's faithfulness to all generations. A reading from Romans. Now, since we have been made right in God's sight by our faith, we are at peace with God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us to the grace in which we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to the day on which we will become all that God had intended. But not only that, we even rejoice in our afflictions. We know that affliction produces perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and character, hope. And such a hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. At the appointed time when we were still powerless, Christ died for us godless people. It is not easy to die even for a good person, though of course for someone really worthy there might be someone prepared to die. But the proof of God's love is that Christ died for us even while we were sinners. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus continued touring all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of God's reign, and curing all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. At the sight of the crowds, Jesus' heart was moved with pity because they were distressed and dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus said to the disciples, the harvest is bountiful, but the laborers are few. Beg the overseer of the harvest to send laborers out to bring in the crops. Jesus summoned the twelve and gave them authority to expel unclean spirits and heal sicknesses and diseases of all kinds. These are the names of the twelve apostles. The first were Simon, nicknamed Peter, that is, the rock, and his brother Andrew. Then James, Ben Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew the tax collector, James ben Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These twelve Jesus sent out after giving them the following instructions. Don't visit Gentile regions and don't enter a Samaritan house. Go instead to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The reign of heaven has drawn near. Heal those who are sick, raise the dead, cure leprosy, expel demons. You received freely, now freely give. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved, grace and peace are yours from the one who calls and sends us, Jesus the Christ. Amen. These are the names of the twelve apostles we hear in the gospel text from Matthew today. The names even include Judas, who the author knew would eventually betray Jesus. I wonder what it would feel like to put our names in their places in this reading. To hear about how Jesus went about all the cities and villages, 
teaching and healing and preaching, and finally feeling absolutely sorry for this vast crowd because they were harassed and helpless, like a sheep without a shepherd. Clearly, Jesus needed some help to do this work. So he called on Simon and Andrew, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, James and Thaddeus, Simon and Judas. As hard as it is for me to believe this, today we are giving thanks as we worship together and yet remotely for our seniors in high school. I have known them since they were in elementary school. I have watched them grow, and so have you. And as much as all of us shake our heads and wonder where the time went, I know their families feel the same. How did their senior year in high school arrive so quickly? And who could ever have imagined it would be like this one? The other evening, we were sharing stories at this dinner table um, about our high school years. Bruce remembers his with remarkable clarity. He was in Germany, and to hear him tell it, he rode the bus two hours both ways in a snowstorm every day. I graduated from high school in an Alabama that had not yet gotten over its overt white supremacy and racism. Or maybe it's more accurate to say that it hadn't learned to hide it as well as the rest of the country. Because here it is, at least several years since I graduated, and we are still having this conversation. There are still people whose racism is barely concealed because everything that we say and everything that we post and everything that we tweet and everything that we do and everything that we don't say, well, that says something about who we are. And lest we forget what Jesus was doing when he went all about those cities and villages teaching and proclaiming and healing, he was teaching about God's love for all people. Back then, he would have been proclaiming God's love for the poor and the widow and the orphan and the women and the lepers and the outcast and the tax collectors who were among the most marginalized. And those who called themselves religious did their own version of mocking and tweeting about him while they clutched their own Bibles they never opened or something like that. When I look around at our world today, I want to find hope in our young people, in the Jacksons and Kyles and Sandys of the world. And I do find hope in them, knowing that they will soon be leading and serving and learning and teaching, guided by the principles of their faith that they have learned from and with this congregation. That gives me hope. Still, Paul reminds us today in Romans that we not only boast in or take heart in that hope, but we also lean into the hard places of life, what Paul calls our sufferings. Because he says that in spite of how difficult they are, this is where we grow. This is where endurance and character are forged. Now I have to tell you, I would rather just lean into the hope part of discipleship in Jesus because frankly, at this point, I have had my fill of watching the world suffer. Watching over 110,000 people in our nation alone die a terrible death from a worldwide pandemic. Watching unjust police kill people because of the color of their skin. 
watching the cities we love burn because it seems to be the only way that anyone will pay any attention. Watching the nation that we love limp along without any moral courage. Watching us wander as lost as the lost sheep of Israel without a shepherd, as it were. Only we aren't without a shepherd. When Jesus sent the disciples out to a hurting world, he sent them out to proclaim the good news that the reign of heaven has come near. Is there any better news than that? I don't think so. And it's as true today as it was then. The reign of heaven has come near. It has, and it is ticked off. It is demanding justice like Jesus preached. It is demanding equality like Jesus modeled at every turn. It is demanding an end to every wicked and evil thing that defies God. When Sandy and Jackson and Kyle were baptized, and at every baptism that has taken place in our beloved sanctuary, we stood, we stood as one for the ancient renunciations of evil. We answered three questions by proclaiming, I renounce them. Now, I know we aren't together, but beloveds, we need to do this again today. So wherever you are, we are going to revisit these renunciations. I am going to ask you those questions again. And from wherever you are, I invite you to proclaim boldly. Stand up if you must and proclaim boldly, I renounce them. And so, people of God, do you renounce the devil and all of the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. This should make us shake in our shoes, and it should propel us into action on behalf of the work of the reign of God that is at hand, that has come near. It is the very work that Jesus called the disciples to. It is healing work. It is the work of naming and casting out demons. And that's what's happening now in our nation. The demons of racism and white supremacy are being named and they are being cast out. Remember the names of the 12 apostles that Jesus called? We can add ours too. And we'll start with Kyle and Sandy and Jackson. But we add ours too. We were called and claimed for this work and for this time in the waters of baptism. We were nourished and strengthened and prepared in our congregation and in our communities and in our families and at the table. And every day, it is our time. Every day, it is our turn to go out into the world and say that the reign of God is at hand. Thanks be to God and let the church say, Amen.
Hi, I'm Jackson Trehark. I'm graduating from Ingram High School and I'm planning on attending the University of Washington in the fall. And I'm trying to major in environmental studies. I'm Kyle Goff. I'm graduating from Nathan Hill High School. I plan to study music education at Pacific Lutheran University. Hi, my name is Sandy Jameson, and I'll be graduating from both Shorewood High School and Shoreline Community College this quarter, with my high school diploma and associate's degree respectively. This fall, I'll be attending the DigiPen Institute of Technology, which is in Redmond, and I'll be majoring in computer science and real-time interactive simulation. Real-time interactive simulation is a really fun and interesting field that covers things like video games and movies, but it also ranges into things like medicine, where if you're a doctor and you've just taken an MRI, some way to interact with that data that you've just collected uh, can be really helpful. So I'm very excited and I can't wait until fall. And now we're going to offer a word of blessing for Jackson and Sandy and Kyle. And so the three of you, I invite you to um, stand or have your families gather around you and put their hands on you in blessing. The rest of us, as from wherever we are, I invite you to extend your hand in blessing as we do when we are physically together. And I invite you to hear and receive these words. In the beginning, God knew you. While in your mother's womb, God named you beloved. At your birth, God's breath filled you with life. And today we celebrate what you have become at this moment in time. And so we pray. God of our beginnings, we thank you for the gifts of these graduates, for Jackson and Kyle and Sandy, for their excitement, for their wonder and for their curiosity, for their open speech and their encouraging words. Their contributions have blessed and challenged us, and we have become a richer and more diverse community because of them. As they step forward into the world that awaits, comfort their fears with the full knowledge of your divine presence. Strengthen their resolve to walk in the footsteps of Jesus as disciples and peacemakers and justice seekers in a world that needs their spirit. Guide their feet as they walk through life, protecting them from the forces of evil while they help to lead and form a new world into the warmth and promise of your reign. We ask this blessing upon each of them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, parent of us all. Amen. Gathered together as the community of Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all in any need. Responding, receive our prayer. For the church, God, our truth through the ages you have spoken through prophets. Stir up in your church a passion for your word revealed in Jesus, that following the witness of the Emmanuel 9, your church studies the scriptures, shows hospitality, prays without ceasing, and embodies prophetic justice and community. Embolden church leaders and all the baptized to remember the lives of the nine, repent of racism and white supremacy, and renew our commitment to your word revealed most fully in Jesus, our way, truth, and life. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. For the nation's mighty and loving God, we pray for our nation and the plague of racism that threatens, destroys, and kills. Root out white supremacy wherever it takes hold. Release its grips on those lured by its false promises. Bring to repentance all who continue to benefit from prejudice and hatred, both hidden and revealed. Plant in our hearts and nation a willing spirit, open to truth-telling and healing. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. For those who are oppressed and victimized, Emmanuel, God with us, you embrace and love those who cry out to you. Lift up all whom hatred has cast down, Embolden those who need courage to speak and act against oppression. 
Sustain those who are weary from efforts that bring no end to injustice. Comfort parents weeping for children, children who have been separated from parents, and families in crisis of any kind. Restore hope where it has been lost, so that all may trust your love that reaches to the depths of pain and suffering. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. Thanksgiving for the saints, we give you thanks, holy God, for the faithful life and witness of Clemente, Cynthia, Daniel, Depayne, Ethel, Myra, Sharonda, Susie, and Taiwanza, the Emmanuel Nine. May their faith and witness to your forgiving love in Jesus Christ inspire all people to pursue paths of justice, courage, and self-giving love. In your great mercy, receive our prayer. All these things that we ask, O God, and whatever we fail to ask, we entrust them to your care. And let the church say, Amen. We are bold to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Emmanuel Nine, of blessed and eternal memory, were nine gifted, loving, and faithful people who spent their lives striving for excellence, connection, and the presence of God and spent their last moments in study of the word. They leave a legacy of grace, resistance, family, and faith. Gracious God, in remembering their lives and witness, we are called to a wider understanding of the Spirit's work in the world. Preachers, open to us and receive the good news of Jesus Christ. They were students, kindle in us a desire to learn and grow in our ways. They were teachers, instill in us a passion to share the wisdom of Christ. They were coaches, Accompany us as we strive to run the race set before us. They were mentors. Inspire us through the wise counsel offered by others. They were leaders. Embolden us to seek out the best in others. They were musicians. Attune us to the sounds of your creation. They were poets. Reveal your truth in language we have yet to discover. They were barbers, shape us as attentive caregivers to those around us. They were custodians, protect those whose work ensures our safety. They were bus drivers, carry us with compassion on life's unexpected journeys. They were veterans, remember those that risk harm for the sake of others. They were librarians, write on our hearts and minds the wisdom of the generations. They were advocates, call us to speak and act on behalf of those who are silenced. They were public servants, help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. They were legislators, inscribe your laws of love and justice on our hearts. In lives of faithful dedication, your servants Clementa, Cynthia, Daniel, DePayne, Ethel, Myra, Sharonda, Susie, and Taiwanza lived by your promises, sharing their gifts with those in their families and communities. May we not forget their lives taken too soon. In the years to come, let us share their names and their witness so that the world comes to know of your spirit at work in and through them. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Beloved people of God, receive this blessing. Neither death nor life, 
nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, no depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.